on TV and movies, the best coaches are often portrayed as someone who yells and is the alpha male or just in charge of everything and everyone's supposed to do what they say. For those coaches, it's my way or the highway, but is that really the best way to lead? Here are five principles about leadership that many people don't know about. A leader is not the boss, number one. Number two, a leader lets people do the things they, sorry, a leader lets people do the things the way they want to. Three, a leader is the one at fault, always. Four, leaders should not let their presence be felt. Five, leaders are courageous enough to not always follow ex expert advice. Let me briefly explain why these principles are true. Number one, a leader is not the boss. A leader takes the lead but cannot implement objectives if the team isn't in agreement with the objectives. With the most successful coach teams, with the most successful teams, the values and standards of everyone is aligned. Number two, a leader lets people do the things they want to do. Sorry, a leader lets people do the things the way they want to. It is important to let people explore their personalities and their capabilities and not get in the way of them accomplishing things. Creativity and problem solving are two important skills for people to have. A leader who forces people to do things a certain way doesn't allow people to develop their um, creativity and problem solving skills. Number three, a leader is the one at fault always. For any setback or mistake, the leader should take responsibility. This will help players trust their leader and often they will have a desire to help their leader be more successful. Number four, leaders should not let their presence be felt. Lao Tzu said, who was a Chinese philosopher, a leader is best when people barely know he exists, not so good when people obey and acclaim him, worse when they despise him, but of a good leader who talks little when his work is done, his aim is fulfilled. Wait, sorry, his work is done, his aim fulfilled, they will say, we did it ourselves. Yeah, so the people saying we did it ourselves was important about that. So this is having a player-centered approach, not a leader-centered or coach-centered approach. Um, five, leaders are courageous enough to not always follow expert advice. It is good to listen to advice from people who have gone before, but it is important for leaders to challenge the norm so that new discoveries can be made. Lavelle Edwards, a famous uh, Hall of Fame fo college football coach, um, when he started at Brigham Young University, he was not well known and BYU wasn't good at football at all. The consensus among football coaches at the time was to throw the f football only when necessary. It's better to run it. Because if, if you threw the football, three things could happen. And, and two of them weren't good. You, you could have an incomplete pass, an interception, and the one good thing was you could have a completion. But he decided to go against the expert advice and threw the ball much more than running it. This led him to a Hall of Fame career as a coach in a national championship. Um, so as coaches and assistant coaches, you can follow these principles. We can follow these principles. Change starts with us. If we change, we can help people understand what it takes to be a good leader. We need coaches who don't think they're the boss, who let people do the things they want to, who always take responsibility when there is a mistake who don't let their presence be felt, and who are courageous enough to not always follow expert advice. Thank you.